Here at the Prosecution Channel, we support a traditional American Christmas. If you support Christmas, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime. And the SJW district attorneys who don't prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. By the time this video is uploaded, there may be a Supreme Court ruling on the election. If we win, that's great. If we lose, that sucks. I'll keep making videos as long as YouTube doesn't ban me. As I speak, part 3 of widespread election fraud with Christmas music is still processing on YouTube. So stay tuned. Before we get into libertarianism, I wanted to get back to this channel's roots. SJW District Attorneys. So let's talk about Los Angeles. George Gasson was elected LA District Attorney. If you followed me back in the day, you know that I predicted this. This is something that I said would be a big deal. Now there have already been other George Soros prosecutors. San Francisco, Philadelphia, Dallas, Houston. Kim Og of Houston and John Crizo of Dallas have done controversial things. However, they've still maintained some semblance of the rule of law. They know if they go too crazy, they'll lose re-election. Dallas and Houston are simply not leftist enough for that. Meanwhile, Larry Krasner of Philly and Chesa Boudin of San Francisco have really let the rule of law die there. For San Francisco, George Gasson had already dug the grave. Chesa Boudin's now pouring the dirt on top of the corpse. San Francisco is a small city that only very wealthy people generally live in. It's also completely overrun with homeless tent encampments. We've all heard about the poop patrols. Philadelphia is also an urban city. Its population has been declining for decades. It's mostly segregated. Majority of the crime and social problems exist in the black neighborhoods. LA District Attorney is a big deal for several reasons. First, it's the largest prosecutor office in the nation. Los Angeles County is huge. While there are wealthy parts and poor parts, I'd say it's more diverse economically and racially as more middle class people living there than San Francisco or Philly. George Gasson is not going to be moderate in his policies. He isn't Kim Og 2.0. He's going to go full on SJW. He's already ended cash bail there. That was a complete disaster when New York did it. It's going to be another disaster for California. The population of Los Angeles County is dramatically higher. It has significantly more gang members. Oh yeah, about that, George Gasson campaigned on deleting the Cal Gang database. Again, this is something that they did in Chicago. It was a catastrophe. Gang intelligence is critical for law enforcement. You don't just delete the gang database because that's racist. So this guy's been on the job now for what, like a week? What else has he managed to screw up? Well, he's pledged to end all prosecution of a variety of misdemeanors. Trespassing, threats, driving with no license, driving with a suspended license, disturbing the peace, and resisting arrest. Now this is just the first list. He's supposedly going to add more stuff as time goes on. Let's start with driving without a license or driving on a suspended license. Well, if the state isn't going to prosecute people for this, why bother going to the DMV? Why would anyone ever go and take the driving test? Only a sucker would pay a traffic ticket. I mean, what is the DMV going to do? Suspend your license? What a joke. Now, some libertarians out there may celebrate this. What right does the state have to make me take a driving test? My personal view, we need a stricter test. There are way too many morons on the road. I've driven in Los Angeles before, and I can attest that it is particularly bad there. One of the worst places to drive. Consider this, though. What's going to happen to the roads? Anyone who has a car knows what a pain in the ass it is financially. You have to pay DMV to register it. If you get traffic tickets, well, those are expensive. Even the driver's license itself costs you money. All of that money that you pay goes to paying for maintenance on the roads. If people opt out of the DMV, there's no money for that. Well, California can just take it from somewhere else. No, they can't. Are you kidding me? California's budget situation is atrocious. Its pension system is a disaster. Right now, they're destroying their economy with these lockdowns. They can't afford to lose a huge source of revenue. So what's LA's roads going to look like 10 years from now? I would guess not very good. When your city is completely dependent on car travel for its economy, like Los Angeles is, it's probably a bad idea to let the roads just fall apart. Just saying. But you know what happens when the roads go into disrepair? Those insurance rates are going to climb up. Actually, let's talk about car insurance. Why do people get car insurance? Well, if you don't get it, the state suspends your license. You have to pay a big ticket to get that suspension reversed. So what happens if license suspension doesn't matter anymore? Well, I imagine many people are going to just stop paying insurance. 
If the number of people driving without insurance skyrockets, insurance rates are also going to go through the roof. Now, trespassing. Here's my experience with how Los Angeles works now. If you're a drug addict who wants to live on a tent in the sidewalk, that's fine. However, only in certain areas. You can do it in Skid Row or downtown. You can do it at Venice Beach. What you can't do is go into the suburbs and set up a tent near a soccer field. That's changing. Now LA will be one massive campground. If your kid's playing soccer and the ball goes into some homeless guy's tent, well, you better tell your kid to watch out for syringes. This is only going to get worse over time. Joe Biden's made it quite clear that he will welcome any person who claims refugee status into the US. If he steals the election, those massive migrant caravans we were getting are coming back in a big way. This time they'll be bigger than ever. And you know what we won't have for these people? jobs and places to live. Remember, as bad as COVID has been here, it's been a hundred times worse in Latin America. Rounding out the list, LA has decriminalized resisting arrest. So now it's legal to fight the cops if they try and arrest you. Are you joking me? Now, does this sound like progress to you? Is Los Angeles becoming a better place to live? To me, it sounds like decay. Leftism is nothing but political decay. Becoming more liberal makes our lives worse off. Well, it's just LA though, right? It's not like the largest prosecutor office in the nation becoming like this is going to have implications for the rest of us. Uh, wrong. What LA is doing is creating entitlements. By not enforcing laws requiring a driver's license, they're tacitly endorsing an entitlement to drive. Allowing people to camp in parks and sidewalks is to suggest they're entitled to do so. That's how the elite rams this BS down our throats time and time again. So take some place like Arizona. A defense lawyer will challenge the Arizona trespass law as being unconstitutional. The case will go to the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco. Some elitist judge from a privileged background will get the case. How could Arizona arrest some poor homeless guy just trying to mind his own business in a tent? We stopped doing that in California years ago. The barbarism of the people who live outside the coast. Or perhaps it won't even be the courts at all. Californians have been leaving the state in droves. These people go to Nevada, Arizona, and Colorado. Then they enact the same failed policies. Arizona legalized marijuana this year. This is after the same ballot proposition failed repeatedly in previous elections. Which brings me to the main subject of this video, libertarianism. One of my first videos on this channel discussed Larry Krasner. I predicted that he would be a disaster. However, a lot of libertarians disagreed. A prosecutor who doesn't enforce the law? Sign me up. To me, this just seemed dumb. Libertarianism was part of the decay. We needed law and order. We needed social conservatives. Libertarianism had way too much influence on the Republican Party. SJWs were using libertarians to push their BS agenda. When I read Patrick Deneen's book, I became even more convinced of this. Deneen explained that liberalism and progressivism were two heads of the same status monster. Over time, we'd be granted more and more freedom to do irresponsible, hedonistic things. At the same time, the state would become more and more authoritarian. So I tended to see libertarians as just as big of adversaries as leftists. Could I have been wrong though? Consider this quote. Take back the streets. Get rid of the bums. Again, unleash the cops to clear the streets of bums and vagrants. Where will they go? Who cares? Hopefully they'll disappear. That is, move from the ranks of the petted and cosseted bum class to the ranks of productive members of society. Is this not exactly what should happen in Los Angeles? The police need to get sent out and get rid of these people. Just like the author of the quote said, where will they go? Who cares? They won't be camping on the sidewalk anymore. That's what actually matters. This quote was from Murray Rothbard, a libertarian. In fact, I think he's the guy who came up with the term anarcho-capitalist. So why would a libertarian advocate for police to go rough up the homeless? Rothbard is what I'd call a red-pilled libertarian. Red-pilled libertarian? What is the prosecutor talking about? Well, let's start out with libertarian. It's someone who's economically and socially liberal, right? Now you've all seen the political compass. 
It's got the economic axis and it has the social axis. Well, what if I told you there was a third axis, which I would describe as the blue pill, red pill axis. If you buy into the illusion that the US is this perfectly honest and free democratic country, then you're blue pilled. If instead, though, you believe our country is actually run by an alliance of corrupt neoliberals and a moralistic managerial class, then you're in fact red-pilled. The neoliberal uniparty is red-pilled. The cathedral is red-pilled. Globo homo is red-pilled. So why did Murray Rothbard advocate to unleash the cops on the bums? He was red-pilled. By allowing stuff like this to occur, the elites oppress us. For example, when the homeless start camping out on the soccer field, kids are probably going to stop playing soccer. That property doesn't belong to the homeless. We're the ones who paid the taxes that paid for that soccer field. Homeless people don't pay taxes. Elites with businesses based in the Cayman Islands don't pay taxes. Welfare recipients, bums, people who leech off society, they're a threat to us. They don't respect our liberty and they don't respect our property rights. So why should we care about them? Because the elites care? The bigger threat is the elites. It's Globo Homo, the alliance of the neoliberals and the cathedral. They're the ones who rig our elections and then cover it up. They censor us. All these things we're told we're obligated to do all the time comes from them. They're the ones who want a great reset. One where we'll own nothing and everything will be a service. They'd love for us to become addicted to the newly legal drugs and pornography. For us to become hedonists who are dependent on the Soma. If this sounds crazy to you, you're blue-pilled. Sorry. Might I recommend you watch Daily Wire videos and read National Review. So am I a libertarian now? Hell no. I still support labor unions, antitrust laws, and environmentalism. Not the cult of global warming stuff, but stuff like don't pour the poison into the river. Abortion is still murder. We don't need or want more immigrants. I'd like to see a well-funded police department that cracks down hard on crime. But why should I criticize red pill libertarians? Let's say Globo Homo gets taken out. We're now living in local independent communities. All the fascism, the war, the censorship is over and done with. People can own their own businesses again. We're not slaves to these global chains. If I get stuck in one of these communities and it happens to be run by libertarians, how is that worse than where we are right now? It wouldn't be. It would be much better. Ideal? No. I still think that libertarianism getting out of control may have been a factor in why we're in the mess we're in today. Patrick Deneen is still correct. Liberalism and Marxism are connected to one another. If you start really ramping up with the liberalism, you're going to have Marxism ramp up as well. I'm still fundamentally a capitalist though. I think red pill conservatives and libertarians could create a pretty good society together. So I'm going to stop dunking on libertarians in the future, unless they're the blue pilled variety. Then it's open season. If you support a traditional American Christmas, then support this YouTube channel by subscribing. Thanks.